Okay, so now let's talk about some of our basic number operations involving complex numbers. So first thing we'll talk about is the additive inverse of a complex number. So one thing to know or to, to be aware of or remember is that additive inverse means the same thing as opposite. And when we are taking the additive inverse or the opposite, we need to make sure that we change the sign of both of our terms because, again, that complex number is going to be a plus bi or a minus bi. So looking at my first example here, I want to know what is the additive inverse of 3 minus 2i. Well, the opposite of 3 would be negative 3. The opposite of a minus 2i would be plus 2i. That would be my additive inverse. It works the exact same way if I'm asked the opposite since, it, opposite, since again, they do mean the exact same thing. So if I'm asked the opposite of negative 4 minus 8i, I change negative 4 to positive 4, and minus 8i to plus 8i. Um, next thing to look at is adding and subtracting complex numbers. So over here on the left, we have adding. So remember that when we're adding, distributing a plus sign does not change signs. Oftentimes I see students want to distribute the plus in and change everything to be positive. That's not the case. Remember, a positive times a positive stays positive. A positive times a negative stays negative. So distributing a plus does not change signs. Um, once you've dropped the parentheses, we'll combine like terms. Subtracting, on the other hand, we do have to make sure and distribute that minus sign. It does make a difference. A negative times a positive does become negative. A negative times a negative does become positive. So it does make uh, a difference if you forget to distribute the minus sign. Uh, after you distribute the minus sign, you can then combine like terms. So if we look at uh, the example for subtracting on the left, um, the 4 plus 5i, there's nothing out front. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of those parentheses. Distributing my plus sign will not change my 3, so a positive times 3 stays positive 3. A positive times negative 7i stays negative 7i. From here, all I have to do are combine my like terms. Well, I see that my like terms are 4 and 3, which gives me 7. And my other like terms are 5i and negative 7i. Remember, the sign belongs to the number. So positive 5 and negative 7 will be negative 2i. And I have successfully added my complex numbers. If I look at the example on subtracting, I notice that there is nothing in front of 11 minus 6i, so I'm going to drop down the 11 minus 6i. I can lose the parentheses. I do have to distribute that minus sign. Minus times 4 becomes minus 4. Minus times minus 8i becomes plus 8i. Combining my like terms once again, remembering sign belongs to the number. 11 and a negative 4 becomes a positive 7. And negative 6i and positive 8i becomes a positive 2i. And that will be, again, my final answer. So, so far we've talked about um, additive inverse or opposite, adding and subtracting. Next thing we'll talk about is multiplying. When we multiply complex, complex numbers, we're going to use the exact same steps as you learned in Algebra 1 when you multiplied polynomials. Um, a couple things to, to remember because you do have to do a couple additional steps that you didn't have to do in Algebra 1 i times i does equal i squared, and i squared does simplify to be negative 1. So if you have an i squared, be sure you are changing it to negative 1, and we always will simplify as much as possible. If you can do the math, do it. So looking at this first example, I notice I have this 4i out front, so I'm going to go ahead and distribute that in, and when I do, I get 4i times 8 is 32i, and 4i times minus i is minus 4 i squared. As I stated up above, I know that i squared is the same thing as negative 1, so I do get 32i minus 4 times negative 1. Well, I know that negative 4 times negative 1 just becomes plus 4i. Uh, excuse me, just becomes plus 4. I don't need that i. So I get 32i plus 4 as my final answer. If I look at example 2, so on an example one, I had a monomial times a binomial, so I distributed. On example two, I see I have a binomial times a binomial, so I'm going to actually go ahead and use FOIL and say first times first is 15. Outside times outside is a plus 40i. Inside times inside is a minus 3i. And last times last, minus i times positive 8 is a minus 8i squared. So now I check to see if there's anything I can do, and I see that I have these two like terms in the middle that I can combine, and I see that i squared I can rewrite as negative 1. So I get 15. Positive 40 and negative 3 is a positive 
37i minus 8 times negative 1. I know negative 8 times negative 1 becomes plus 8. And now that I've simplified negative 8 times negative 1, I'm going to combine my 15 and my 8. Doing so gives me 23 plus 37i as my final answer. Looking at one last example, one thing to be careful of, I see here I have 7 minus 4i squared. Please make sure you do not distribute that square. I have to go to the meaning. What does it mean to square something? Well, it means to multiply it by itself twice. So I first rewrite this as 7 minus 4i times 7 minus 4i. And once I do that, I now have a binomial times a binomial, very similar to the way I did in example two. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and FOIL, saying first times first gives me 49. Outside times outside, 7 times minus 4i is minus 28i. Inside times inside, minus 4i times 7 is minus 28i once again. And last times last, minus 4i times minus 4i. Well, minus 4 times minus 4 is a positive 16. i times i is an i squared. I look and I see I have some like terms here I can put together. And not only do I have like terms, but I also have an i squared that I can change to be negative 1. So I end up with 49 minus 56i plus 16 times negative 1. Well, I can go ahead and do 16 times negative 1. Doing that gives me 49 minus 56i minus 16. And lastly, I can go ahead and combine 49 and minus 16 for a final answer. 33 minus 56i. So those are the remaining operations with complex numbers.